Greetings, I welcome you to our worship service here at Bethel United Church of Christ here in Evansville, Indiana. I'm Reverend Samuel Buer, and I'm pleased to say that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here in this place here where we strive to be united in seeking God's will and in serving all people. So again, we welcome those who are worshiping with us in person as well as those that are joining us online uh, as part of our church family this day. Throughout this month of October, we're doing a number of collections for things, but our main mission moment for the, or mission for this month is Neighbors in Need. It's an offering that's hosted by the, our wider church of the United Church of Christ. Uh, much of the offering goes towards justice work that the church is about, as well as our Native American population, our churches and, and, uh, uh needs that are there. We're also collecting in the back for uh, this coming at the end of the month, uh, trunk or treat. So we're looking for candies and things to, for that special day and, uh, and also folks that want to decorate their vehicles for a trunk or treat on that Sunday afternoon after church. Let us worship God this day. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God. Glorious is your name in all the earth. We celebrate who you are and all that you have done for us. You hold our lives in your hands and catch us when we stumble. We come together today, led by your Holy Spirit, to worship you, to sing your praise, to confess our mistakes, and to receive your love and mercy, made possible through the life of your Son, Jesus Christ. Be present among us as we worship you, and as we open ourselves to your word. For here in this place, there are no foreigners, for all are welcome in God's house. Here in this worship, there is only acceptance, for love is the language of faith. Here in our lives, there are no divisions, for God dwells in each of us. Come, let us worship in unity and love. Let us sing this, our first song, Come Live in the Light. You'll find it on page five in our bulletin. But those are able to stand.
Let us pray together. God beyond borders, we know that on our way to worship, we may not have noticed the exiles in our neighborhoods. We admit how easy it is for us to wander down the streets of temptation, pausing at the corner of easy choices. We fall silent in the presence of those who speak words of anger and hate. We tolerate a culture that suspects all who are different from us. Have mercy on us, O God, for surely you take the side of justice. Open our hearts to all the wonders you are performing in our lives. You gift us with those of other cultures that our lives might be blessed. You send us friends out of places we least expect that our community might be enriched. You call us to be generous with our blessings so others might be graced with the gift of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Let's be in a time of silence. Hear these words. God challenges us, encourages us, confronts us, and God accepts us. God works wonders in our midst and gives us the eyes, the hearts, and the souls to see such miracles. God forgives us. God guides us through the wilderness of the world. God leads us home. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you, the congregation, to be seated. Good morning. 
I would like to invite any kids or teenagers to come forward if they would like. Um, I also just wanted to add a couple of words about Trunk or Treat. Um, again, it's October 30th, uh, which is a Sunday. It's after church. There will be kids from the community and preschool kids and church kids. There will be hot dogs, chips, and drinks. You may not have known that. And then, of course, the kids will trick or treat. So there's several ways that you can help. You can be a host trunk, as we've mentioned. You could also maybe help heat or serve hot dogs. You could help show people where to go. Or you can represent Bethel by being a friendly greeter, which is really important when we're dealing with people who have never even uh, known anything about our church, perhaps. So all those jobs are important. And if you can't be there that day, you could still bring some candy next week to help uh, refill the host trunks baskets, host trunks baskets or bowls. There is a black bin in the narthex, um, the sanctuary lobby, uh, for candy donations. And if you could avoid nuts, that'd be good for kids with allergies. Um, and there's also a sign-up sheet on the counter um, to help with volunteer jobs uh, that I mentioned. And one side's getting full, so you can just flip it over and uh, sign up on the other side if you'd like. So um, I have some signs this morning, and I wonder if any of you know what this means, what it says. No? Okay. How about this one? What does it mean? <laughs> you pronounce it very well, though. <laughs> what about this one? <laughs> Adults, no cheating. <laughs> All right. This one? And I bet you might know this one. Do you have any idea what it means? What? Thank you. Thank you. Yes. They all mean thank you, actually, uh, in different languages. And, different, and that's just a tiny little percentage of all the different languages um, that would say thank you in different ways. All over the world, they believe it's very important to say thank you. Uh, it'd be hard to find a culture that didn't think that was important. When someone does something for you or gives you something, and we have lots to be thankful for every day, uh, and sometimes we forget to say those two little words. It, that's what happened in our Bible passage today as well. The story is about ten lepers. And do you know what a leper is? Okay, it's someone with a disease um, called leprosy. And the disease causes sores all over the body. And leprosy was very common in Jesus' day, and the people who had this disease were thought to be dirty and unclean because it was contagious for one thing. And they were required to stay away from other people because of the fear that they might infect them with their disease. One day, Jesus was walking through a small village when he saw a group of ten lepers. They stood far away from Jesus and called to him, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Obviously, they knew who Jesus was and that he had the power to heal them. When Jesus heard them, he called back to the lepers and said, Go show yourselves to the priest. As the lepers went on their way to see the priest, they looked at their skin and the sores were gone. Jesus had healed their disease. They were so happy that they ran up and down the streets singing and dancing. Suddenly, one of them stopped and went back. Praising God with a loud voice, he threw himself at Jesus' feet and said, Thank you. Jesus said to him, Weren't there ten who were healed? Where are the other nine? The other nine probably all forgot. God does so much for us. Every day he provides everything we need. Food, clothing, and a place to live. Do we ever forget to say thank you to God? Yeah, sure we do. So let's stop right now and say thank you. 
Dear Lord, you give us everything we need. But we often forget to say thank you. We thank you now. And ask you to help us remember to give thanks every day for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Uh, anyone who would like to can follow me back to Children's Church. Two scriptures for this day. Reading first from the book of Psalms, the 66th chapter, first couple verses. Make a joyful noise to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of God's name. Give God glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. Because of your great power, your enemies cringe before you. All the earth worships you. They sing praises to you. Sing praises to your name. Come and see what God has done. Awesome are God's deeds among mortals. God turned the sea into dry land, and they passed through the river on foot. There we rejoice in the one who rules forever, whose eyes keep watch on the nations, and let the rebellious not exalt themselves. Bless our God, O peoples, let the sound of God's praise be heard, who has kept us among the living, and has not let our foot our feet slip. For you, O God, have tested us, and you have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us into the net, and you laid burdens on our backs. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, yet you have brought us out to a spacious place. Here also the passage from the book of Luke, the 17th chapter, the story that Cynthia just shared. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten men with a skin disease approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And they went, and they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And it says here, he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? So where are the other nine? Did none of them return to give glory to God except this foreigner? And then he said to him, Get up. Go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The word of God this day for the people of God. Thanks be to God Almighty. Amen. Let us pray for a moment. May the words of my mouth, may the meditations of all of our hearts be found acceptable in thy sight, O Lord God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Last Sunday, I share with you that for many years the way that I've approached the scriptures, I've approached the scriptures with an understanding that they're far more radical than I originally thought. Which means they're also very revelatory. So today's scripture is the one in Luke. It can be read at several different levels. An easy one the one that we gave in the children's message. This is a story of Thanksgiving. A 
the one giving thanks. There's a story of a reminder that we all need to give thanks every day of our lives for what God is doing in our midst. And sometimes we forget that. As it said, nine of the story did. But there's a whole other level to the story as well. One that's far more radical than that. That being a teaching on Thanksgiving is not radical. But I drew your attention to the radical nature of the story. And I stopped and said that one little sentence where it's noticed that he was a Samaritan. That changes the story. It makes the story far more radical than just one about Thanksgiving. In fact, probably in some churches and some places, this story ought to have a little disclaimer on it. And this story may be hazardous to your health or to your thinking. What got me going on this was we, what we bring to the story gives us a bias in how we tend to read it. The bias that we have on this one is it's a story about leprosy. And it appears to be. There's a whole other layer to this story. Here's some things I've learned about leprosy. Leprosy was a disease, we call it Hansen's disease in this day. There was a problem, though, for the King James, the author, or the writers of the King James Version of the Bible, for those that were doing the interpretation from Hebrew. They knew what leprosy was. And so they wrote it back into the Hebrew Scriptures, into the book of Leviticus. The problem was the book of Leviticus was written some three or four hundred or five hundred years or somewhere around that time before the time of Christ. And leprosy didn't come to the Middle East until Alexander the Great did have a movement of migration of his people. And they brought it from India around the year 300 BC. So now we've got some time frames that happening that's not happening very well. Leprosy wasn't in the Middle East until 300 BC. But the book of Leviticus, which supposedly speaks about leprosy, was written probably before that time. So now I'm going to teach a little bit about the book of Leviticus. How often do you get a sermon on the book of Leviticus? The book of Leviticus, the chapters that are worthy of this story, are in the chapters of 11 through 15. And the book of Leviticus, in those chapters, it's all about boundaries and respecting boundaries or creating boundaries. It's about physical boundaries of the mouth. That's Leviticus 11. What foods you're allowed to eat, what foods you can take into your mouth, what's not appropriate for your mouth, for your body. That's chapter 11. You move to chapter 12, and then it gets into birth and conception and childbearing, childbirth, and the, and the processes around the boundaries of the female body related to the birth of a child. That's chapter 12. Chapter 13 and 14 get into what we were talking about, leprosy or skin diseases, not leprosy because it wasn't there in the, in the time of Leviticus. But it, gets, it starts talking about the boundaries of the skin and then also what clothes we're allowed to wear. And none of us follow the book of Leviticus on this one. I see some heads nodding. Because you're not allowed to wear clothing unless it's all of the same material. It can't be mixed. Those are the boundaries. Then you get to chapter 15. You'll never hear me preach a sermon on this one. Because these are talking about the bodily fluids that you and I, men and women, Do something with. 
I'm not going there. (laughs) But what Leviticus is all about is creating boundaries between what's holy and what's unholy. What's clean, what's unclean. Boundaries between peoples. The clean ones and the unclean ones. The good Hebrew folk from Judea. The Samaritans, on the other hand, the unclean ones. This is a story about boundaries. We thought it was a story about leprosy, which could be. It was there in Jesus' time. More so, this is a story about setting up boundaries. We have a Samaritan who's by definition an outsider. A foreigner. And you know how they treated foreigners in that day? Not well. I can only imagine how this story was received by the people to whom Jesus is telling the story. Jesus is telling it to good Hebrew people. He's moving their boundary. You ever move somebody's cheese? How oh, they don't like that? Jesus is moving the cheese. He's moving the boundary. Ever been an outsider? I see a lot of heads shaking. Here's where I need to have a conversation. Those of you shaking your heads, you don't need to listen for a little bit. But if you're a white male heterosexual, you need to listen. Because most of us have never felt like an outsider. And sometimes it's good to feel like an outsider and to see the world as another does. There was one time I can remember in my life. I was traveling. I was college age. I was in Greece. Looking forward to seeing some of the things in Greece. It was late in the evening. Hopped on the train with a traveling companion. And the train, that train that night, was horribly overbooked. And in Greece... On their trains, you're not allowed to stand in the aisle way. There were no seats. All the seats were taken when I got on. You weren't allowed to stand in the aisle way. And for some stupid reason I'll never understand, the place where you are allowed to stand when there are no seats is on the gangplank between the, the rail cars. As you watch the grass and the stones and everything go by. That's where I'm sitting on my luggage, on the gangplank. And I happened to have caught a cold and I wasn't feeling well. And that's not where I wanted to be. I wanted to be sound asleep in a seat. Two hours later, finally, this is a four-hour train trip. Finally, enough people got off. There's an empty seat. I promptly sat down and I fell asleep. It was late at night feeling miserable. Then all of a sudden, sound asleep, I get kicked by the guy across from me. And I wake up, and he's pointing. And there's a young woman who needs a seat. I got up. I was asleep grab my case. I'm at the door before I realize he could have gotten up. (laughs) 
I was a foreigner. I was the only non-Greek person in that rail car. I was the outcast. Haven't been back to Greece since. <laughs> Not high on my list. If that's how we're going to treat foreigners. Now all of you that have been treated that way, now you, you can come back in and listen. But we white males, we tend not to realize or are aware of how we treat others. I wonder if Jesus were here today, how would he tell this story? Here in the 1960s, Maybe he would have made the one that came back and said, thank you, a person of color. Or in the years since, when the church tends to fight about gays and lesbians and trans folks, I wonder if maybe he would have made one of them, the one that said, thank you, gay or lesbian or trans or other. And now, as I watch the migrant, the movement of people around the world, not just at our southern border, but from nations to nations because of flooding, think of Bangladesh, two thirds of their land underwater. How much longer can you live there? Think of the migration that's gonna come out of there or the Pacific Islands. And we can't figure here in the U.S., how to handle a few people crossing a border? We haven't seen anything yet. But if we continue to treat people as other and see them as other, we're never going to get to that beloved community of which Jesus was telling stories. In our Sunday school class this morning, I'm going to draw your attention up here to the fancy word raritas, to this carving of Jesus on the, on the cross. When I look at that, and one of the folks in that room, in our, I'll put my words in his mouth, said what, the reason he's here, because he saw those open arms welcoming me welcoming everybody. I don't see the cross when I look at that. I see those open arms welcoming everybody without exception. No matter who you are, where you are on life's journey, you are welcome in this place, because we're about building that beloved community. We're even the Samaritans, or fill in whatever word you want at this point, is welcomed and praised for who they are. And therein is healing. Amen. I would invite those who are able to rise as we sing, We Walk by Faith.
I invite you to be seated as we turn now to a time of prayer. Let's keep in our prayers again those who we've named as we began the service. I was thinking of another one we didn't, I didn't have a card for, but one who is facing surgery in the early part of November for a brain tumor. Folks that have lost their homes from floods, from hurricanes, from war. For these and many more, let us bow our heads for prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, you invite us here to come to this place to journey with one another as we strive to build a better world, a beloved community. Open our hearts, open our minds, open our eyes. Open our awareness of the boundaries that are often being built and created that make others feel like other. Help us to tear down those boundaries, those walls. Because we know that all are children of God, all are special in your sight, in our sight. And so we come. We come to this time and we come with many different prayers. So now in the stillness of this morning hour, in the silence of this time, hear our prayers, O oh Lord. Here these are prayers. And again, we add to them prayers for healing. Those who need your healing touch, who yearn to be okay. So we pray for healing and wholeness in whatever form you bring it. We pray for those who are grieving. Where there are empty chairs at the table. We pray for those who grieve. In this land of plenty, we pray for those who are hungry. or those without homes. Washed away by hurricanes. We pray for those who are living in the midst of the horrors of war. We pray for peace. We pray for that beloved community where there are no enemies, for we are all one. For these and many others we pray, as we now join in one voice, the prayer that our Savior has taught us as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread. and Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time we dedicate the gifts that God has given to us to the work of that beloved community, gifts of our time, our talents, our treasures. Please join with me in this prayer. Loving God, we give thanks for the visions and the dreams that you share with your people. We offer these gifts in response to your abundant blessings and ask that you use them and the commitment they represent to share your good news with all the world. Amen. I invite those who are able to rise as we sing. We sing praises. One of my favorite benedictions. May you love God so much that you love nothing else too much. May you fear God enough that you need fear nothing else at all. This service is ended. Your service now begins. Go knowing that the Spirit of Christ is upon you. Amen. Thank you.